The Fall of Giants, Hertha Berlin. Welcome back to another episode of Football Society. Have you subscribed to be part of the Football Society community yet? If not, then come and join us and never miss out on any of our latest, freshest uploads as soon as they're available. What's been going wrong for Hertha Berlin? June 27th, 2019 was supposed to be an unforgettable day in the history of Hertha Berlin, the awakening of a sleeping giant after years of general mediocrity. German entrepreneur Lars Windhurst and his investment firm Tanner Holding BV had just finalised the biggest financial deal in Bundesliga history, pumping 125 million euros into Hertha BSC in the hopes of forming a new footballing force on German soil. Whereas all the other European leagues boast at least one capital club regularly competing in international competition, Germany have rarely extracted any football pedigree from theirs. From the seat of government, a late night donner to a vibrant party scene, just about anything can be found in Berlin, bar an internationally competitive football outfit, with the city's most prominent club failing to win a national title since 1931. Under Winhurst, this was all going to change however, with the once tech wonder kid now promising a restless fan base that they too would become a big city club like those in Madrid or London. Awful displays on the pitch and an ominous slide down the table will always land at the feet of the playing squad, but for her to be SC, the recent failures began with an infectious disease spreading in the backroom management. Since Winhurst's engagement in 2019, no Bundesligist has had more technical upheaval than Hertha BSC, with the club routinely landing in the tabloids for management failure and disgraceful employee behaviour. Jens Lehmann, a 61-time German international, was probably the most public example. The former Arsenal invincible lost his position in the club's supervisory board following leaked messages in which he called Dennis Iogo the quota black guy on Sky Sports' Bundesliga broadcast. Perhaps that can be chalked down to the wild ramblings of a man who seemed always had a screw loose, but less than a month earlier, goalkeeping coach Jolt Petri put the club under an equally disparaging spotlight. In an interview with Hungarian newspaper Magyar Nemzet, Petri not only ridiculed Peter Gulacsi's decision to play for a club which supported same-sex marriage, RB Leipzig, but the 55-year-old also had a scathing stance on European migration, which was littered with casual racism and vicious undertones. In both cases, Hertha not only avoided making a statement until the outside noise became unbearably loud, but they did so while simultaneously boasting the image of a club which stands for diversity, tolerance and world openness, even proudly displaying it on their club website. In any environment, such actions could alienate a fan base by creating irreparable divides, but nowhere more so than in Berlin, undoubtedly Germany's most liberal and multicultural city. Though the mood of a match-going fan remains almost entirely fueled by results on the pitch, becoming a big city club, representing the values of the Berlin public image they cater for, simply demands more accountability. Even when blatant bigotry hasn't led to an untimely dismissal, the Windhurst era has still found more than enough reasons to continuously chop and change the staff over the past two and a half seasons. With an influx of capital practically overnight, Hertha had to entirely restructure their investment strategy from one day to the next. Individuals previously tasked with keeping a middling Bundesliga club from sinking into the second tier now had to create a dominant European outfit with newfound pedigree. This impossible pull to merge the old with the new has left lasting scars across the club, but nowhere more so than in the technical arena. Head coaches have consistently come under fire whilst the backroom staff routinely fall short of expectations in an almost habitual loop. In the 950 days of the Windhurst era, the Alta Dama had six different managers. No other club in Europe's top five leagues has had such a massive turnover during this period, highlighting the continual lack of awareness in Hertha's hiring process. Shortly before Windhurst's tenure began, Paul Darde was sacked, a former defensive midfielder who brought a cautious approach to the managerial dugout. In a previous era where the only goal was Bundesliga survival, such a regressive style flourished, 
But with Berlin's glory days beckoning, a more adventurous man was needed to get the best out of the incoming jewels. A flirtatious attempt to get Erich ten Hag shortly after his Ajax side missed out on a Champions League final was unsurprisingly turned down. So too were approaches for the out of work duo of Roger Schmidt and Andre Villa Boas. So Hertha were left with few credible options upon Winhurst's arrival. Ultimately, the 43 year old Ante Kovic would take over a forward-thinking manager doing respectable work with the under-23s, but an inexperienced name to head a project of this scale. By November, Kovic was unsurprisingly relieved of his duties and replaced by Jurgen Klinsmann, a 10-game experiment which included the fireworks of an 80 million euro winter outlay, but ended just 80 days later with an out-of-the-blue resignation via Facebook. Klinsmann was supposed to be the marquee new arrival whose playing pedigree could uplift a star-studded roster, yet in reality, it just showed the managerial shortcomings of a man left behind in the world of football. An interim spell from Klinsmann's number two, Alexander Nuri, saw Hertha ship 11 goals in four matches, so the big city club went back to its roots. Bruno Labbadia, the Sam Allardyce of German football, came in to extinguish the fires of a pending relegation, whilst the following January Hertha would go one step further and reunite a fanbase promised success with the familiar face of Pal Darde. In each instance, one could argue that the manager tasked with shaping the side underperformed in their role, but to truly get at the heart of the issue, one needs to gaze a bit further up the pecking order where true decision making lies. Michael Priez, Hertha's BSC's record goalscorer turned general manager was responsible for the roster planning and managerial appointments between June 2009 and January 2021. In that time, Priez fired 11 managers, spent over 200 million euros, and routinely brought the club into turmoil with ill-advised transfers and idiotic appointments. Matt Herman, host of the Talking Foosball podcast and avid Hertha supporter, went as far as to say getting rid of Priez was the single most important thing to allow the club to move forward, a stance you'd find hard to argue with given the Germans' disillusionary track record. Despite shattering transfer records and becoming the biggest January spenders in Bundesliga history, in his final two seasons, Priez failed to recruit a squad capable of performing at the level which Windhurst investment should have enabled. Individuals like Shishtof Piantek, Lucas Tussart and Dodi Lukibakio provide prime examples. All three signed for well over 20 million euros, but each of them rarely, if ever, showing a glimpse of their potential in the German capital. Whether it's Priez's poor management choices limiting the influence of individual talent, these supposed superstars performing well below their price tag, or a combination of both, each and every scenario undeniably points back to the poor decision making from the man overseeing it all. Rather than bolster a relegation firefighter with disciplined specialists, or provide Hertha's superfluous talent with an imaginative attacking manager, Priez attempted to marry the two ideas, ultimately causing a slow and steady decline as Hertha's management philosophy clashed with its playing squad to create irrefutable damage. Tasked with rebuilding the sinking ship is Freddy Bobic, the Blue-White's new sporting director who joined from Eintracht Frankfurt over the summer. In his five seasons in Hessen's financial metropolis, Freddy Bobic left a lasting impression, taking a club previously yo-yoing in and out of the top flight to a pokal triumph and European semi-final. From top to bottom, Bobic's work was commendable, but particularly his transfer activity deserved enthusiastic praise. The former German international not only got it right, but smashed any and all expectations by bringing in the likes of Andre Silva, Luka Jovic, Antti Rebic and Sebastian Aller for 41.84 million euros and selling them on again just a couple years later for over 100 million euros in profit. This same process has taken roots in Berlin with Bobic already turning a profit by selling notable stars in favour of a wider crop of fresh talent. However, 
Even he hasn't been given the freedom to get the process right in the dugout. After securing top flight safety and losing just once in his final nine Bundesliga outings, Pal Darde was practically unsackable over the summer, an irritating roadblock for a sporting director looking to revolutionise strategy and processes across the entire club. When results inevitably turned on the Hungarian, Hertha were 13 games into the 2021-2022 campaign and just one point above the drop zone. Thoroughly unattractive to a top manager looking to set up forward-thinking structures while simultaneously battling the drop. Bobic, left with little choice but to call upon another relegation specialist, ultimately selected Typhoon Korkut. Freddy Bobic, unlike his predecessor Prietz, finally has given powerful roles to intelligent decision makers, simultaneously putting an end to a model which saw ex-professionals offer meaningless input off the pitch by living off their past reputation on it. Almost the entire scouting department has been remodelled, with seven new scouts appointed to cast a wider net in the talent search and to allow for a more balanced assessment of potential recruits. Babakar Wayne, head scout, and Enis Hadri, scout, both followed their boss after impressive work at Frankfurt, whilst Leonardo Cipoli, scout, was also brought in from Arsenal following the English club's decision to move to a more data-driven model. But even beyond the first team, Bobic has taken a proactive stance, most notably restructuring the youth academy by appointing Pablo Tiam, formerly of VFL's Wolfsburg, as the club's new academy director. Despite being the fifth largest city in Europe and operating with a large pool of local talent, Hertha BSC have only sporadically used their academy to earn a profit or produce standout first team graduates. Whereas West German clubs routinely export talent amongst harsh local competition, Berlin habitually falls short of the mark despite being one of the few large cities to cater to the East German market. Hertha could still come true on Winhurst's promise of becoming a footballing destination. If they don't, this big city club could become the next dreary tale of a forgotten giant wallowing away in the lower tiers. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.